Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The woman who held back Cromwell's army on her own. The English Civil War was one of the bloodiest conflicts fought on English soil. It saw the parliamentarians try to overthrow the king and the royalist army, but during the battles that occurred, there were stories of many warriors who made names for themselves on the battlefield. There was one woman who carved an incredible reputation by herself for defending one of England's most famous and beautiful castles. Lady Mary Banks was not a military commander, but she was married to King Charles I Attorney General, and she was known for defending Corfe Castle against Parliament's army incredibly well. She gained the respect of her enemies for her work, but what is the story of Lady Mary Banks? The beginning of the Civil War saw people have to choose between supporting the King or Parliament. There was great upset towards the King, who continued to make terrible mistakes with Parliament. Those who supported Parliament were the Roundheads, and the Royalist Army were the Cavaliers, and at the start, in the southeast of England, Parliament were mostly dominant. There were a number of Royalist strongholds and settlements, and many of these fell, but Corfe Castle, one of England's most historic and finest, would not give up so easily. At the time, it was the home to the Banks family, and they were Royalists and close to the King. Lady Mary Banks and the structure of Corfe helped it to be easily defended and strong. She had been born in the final years of the Tudor period, and was married to John Banks, who became an MP and also close with the King. He was knighted while Charles I, and became the King's Attorney General. And for this, he brought Corfe Castle for his family to live in. Corfe is a beautiful and magnificent structure that today shows the destruction and impact of the Civil War as it lies in ruins following Cromwell's decision to destroy it and put it beyond military use. The ruins are very impressive, and it's possible that the works of Mary Banks that led to it being destroyed so badly. When the Civil War broke out, her husband stayed loyal to the King and served with him in his Royalist army, and Mary, along with her children, stayed in Corfe whilst her husband travelled north. She must have known that soon the Parliament's army would come to Corfe and would be knocking on the doors. Because of this, she formed a small garrison of soldiers who were loyal and close to her, and she sent her children away. Mary Banks did not flee, and she stayed with a handful of soldiers who would defend Corfe. The situation in Dorset looked dire for the King, and by spring of 1643, most of the country was under the control of Parliament, and Corfe was the only Royalist stronghold left. In the May of 1643, the enemy came and they arrived with around 200 to 300 soldiers led by Sir Walter Earl. He demanded that Lady Banks should hand over the keys of Corfe and a surrender to the enemy, but she refused to do so. Now, instead of negotiating, Mary Banks ordered her garrison to open their cannons up on the enemy, and she barraged them with cannonballs from within her safe stronghold. Sir Walter then fled with his army, and they knew that a battle would take place, and because of this, they gathered many more soldiers. Lady Mary sent a message to appeal to the Royalist forces to come and help defend Corfe, and a captain, Robert Lawrence, answered the call and brought 80 Royalist soldiers into the castle's middle bailey. Mary was in charge of the upper bailey and the keep, and Lawrence in charge of the lower parts of the castle and the gates. But as predicted, on the 28th of June, Sir Walter Earl and his forces returned. However, they now had 600 men and were happy to besiege the castle and continue to attack to try and take control. For six whole weeks, Mary Banks held out Corfe Castle, battling back several attempted invasions and breaches of the walls. But she never intended to surrender, and outside the castle, the forces began to respect her greatly. She was seen as a fine commander, and as a respectful woman of good morals, who would not shake in her faith for the cause she believed to be right. Parliament's forces were held off by the defenders, who often threw stones and hot embers towards the enemy, who were trying to scale the walls of the castle with siege ladders. The defenders killed well over 100 of Parliament's men, peppering them with gunshots from the cannons too. But Banks then received devastating news. Her husband had been killed fighting in the King's army. 
Parliament kept sending soldiers to try and get Corfe's garrison to submit, but nothing could be done, and even after the first part of the Civil War was over, Lady Mary Banks still held Corfe. For over three years, she successfully defended her castle against her enemies, but she was eventually betrayed. She was not overwhelmed by an attacking force, but instead someone from inside turned against her and the cause. One of her soldiers, it's not known if it was done intentionally or by accident, left a door open and Parliament's forces then ran into the fortification using the Sallyport entrance. The Roundheads even turned their jackets inside out to disguise themselves, and Colonel Pittman, who was involved in defending, fell for it. He led them into the main part of the castle and Corf was then taken by Parliament. Lady Mary Banks, who had defended for years, was forced to surrender and hand over the keys to the castle to her enemy. It was said that she threw the family's wealth and treasures down the castle's well and was allowed to keep the castle's keys and the seal as the enemy was so impressed with how she conducted herself defending the castle. But the Bankses never went back to Corf Castle. After the Civil War, Cromwell slighted Corf to put it beyond military use to ensure that any royalist threat could not use it as a military stronghold. When walking around the ruins, you can see the huge and colossal amounts of rubble which came off the main keep building, showing the sheer amount of gunpowder which would have been needed to destroy it. Lady Mary Banks died in the April of 1661, and her defence of Corf Castle showed her as one of the most impressive military leaders across the country, and she was a woman not to be messed with. She managed to protect her home and cause for years from Parliament, and she valiantly defended Corf Castle. Today she's remembered as the great defender of one of England's greatest medieval castles. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.